Grüezi YouTubers. Here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. In the last video we started to build our simulator of a racing car. In this video we will continue this journey and try to read the position of the accelerator and the brake pedal by an innovative solution. In the last video we also decided to keep the current solution for the steering signal. So today we can concentrate on the pedals. Last week I asked you guys about proposals to read the position of the pedals in the racing car simulator. There were some good ideas around, especially with linear hole sensors. All proposals had in common that they need a pole which is fixed somewhere in the car. This is a disadvantage also of the current solution because it has to be moved in and out if you want to use the car on the racing track. My proposed solution should work without the fixed part. I try to use two accelerometers only attached to the pedals to measure their position. With this concept there is no need for a second part fixed in the car. But unfortunately I do not know if it will work. Let's try. Accelerometers are very interesting devices. If properly used, they know their position in space. The only reference they need is gravitation. And gravitation is everywhere. I know the devices from my self-balancing robot where they reliably measure the angle of the robot. So the concept is to attach an accelerometer to each pedal and let them measure the angle between their position, which is also the position of the pedal, and gravity. This should provide a good input for our Xbox controller. There are several modules around. I use the MPU9050 because it's one of the most advanced chips and it is widely available and very cheap. I will not explain its functioning and its interfacing. Fortunately, Jeff Roberg wrote a library to use these chips. So we can concentrate on how to use it for our purpose. So the foreseen block diagram will look like that. We have an Arduino Pro Mini and the Xbox controller. The current steering sensor will stay the same and will be directly connected to the controller. The two accelerator modules are connected by I2C to the Arduino and the digital potentiometer presented in the last video will also be connected by an I2C to the Arduino. So we have first to build our sensors. I use the JY-521 module and hot glue it into small 3D printed boxes. The connection is done by GX12 connectors because they are very reliable. Now let's test the sensors. For the tests I use a stepper motor to turn the sensors precisely into its position. Then I transfer the readings to an Excel sheet. If you want to know how this is done, you can watch my video about this topic. The link is in the comments. Just do not forget the switch to switch the data locking on or off. This is very important. Fortunately, it is not necessary to understand the complete mathematics behind the calculations of the angle. Good for me, as this is really rocket science. But I want at least to understand how the direction of the module is connected with the values I read with the library functions. To measure angles compared with gravity, you can use either Euler angles or the yaw, pitch and roll model. The yaw, pitch and roll model is easy to understand for me, so I use this one. Now I have to understand how I have to orient the module in space. The datasheet of the MPU6050 shows that the initial position is with a chip in horizontal position. So let's mount the box sunny side up to the stepper motor and start the measurements.
Here you see the first result. The curve is not very linear and we do not get the full swing of plus minus 90 degrees. The diagram shows also that we get the same angle for two different positions in space. So I have to search Google if I find something concerning these problems. After searching I discovered that each sensor is mechanically different and has to be calibrated. I even found a sketch to get the calibration values. I put the link into the description. After calibration the linearity improved considerably. Now it's ok for me. It still does not reach the full swing of plus minus 90 degrees and the fact that we get the same reading from the position of let's say 35 and 155 degrees is because I use the yaw pitch roll system. Also that is ok. I just have to take it into account when I mount the sensor to the pedal. Because I need sensors for the brake and the accelerator pedal I have to distinguish the sensors from the brake and the accelerator pedal I put them in two different colored boxes. I also have to pull the AD0 pin of one module high to change the I squared C address of the second sensor. So we have now two sensors with two different I squared C addresses. The calibration values are really completely different for each sensor. So I have to enter a set of independent values into the setup of my sketch. The next thing I want to understand is the strange behavior of the yaw signal. After some thinking I found out that only two readings are influenced by gravity, roll and pitch. The yaw does not depend on gravity and therefore cannot be used for our purpose. I found out that the yaw tends also to drift into one direction. This is why it is usually corrected by using a magnetometer which always points to north. But anyway, I do not care about the direction the car is oriented. I just want to get the signals which are connected to gravity. And these signals are quite linear. If I change the orientation of the sensor, the useful signal also changes. In one orientation the pitch signal is the useful signal and in other position the roll signal is the usable signal. So how to find out? Just start with the upright position of your chip and turn the module in the direction of your future movement. Keep it stable in the other directions. Then you see which value moves in which direction. Use this value for your future readings and forget about the two others. Now we have everything together for a first test. Because this device has to be reliable in the future, I milled already now a PCB and mounted the digital potentiometer and the Pro Mini on it. So far I have no box for the whole thing. For the first test I attach the two sensors to the pedals and attach the Pro Mini to my laptop to supervise the tests. My brother moves the pedals. We found out that the accelerator moved only about 12 degrees. The angle of the brake was only 4 degrees. So I'm glad that the sensors are pretty linear. Because the Xbox expects full swing values of the potentiometers I have to map the readings to the values from 0 to 255, the full range of the digital potentiometer AD5242. Now let's try the whole setup and start the simulator. The overall system works also in the car. Now I have to go home and print the new box for all the components and assemble the whole thing. As a last step, my brother has to start the intensive tests. We have to be sure that everything works before the next event. And for all eventualities, 
we still keep the old mechanical setup and the old box, just in case. For me, this is an example of the versatility of this new class of sensors. They can replace other types of sensors to measure distance, like hall or ultrasonic sensors, if we can translate distance movements into angle movements. I want to thank you all for your ideas and hope you find the way I solved the problem at least okay. The next video will be something new for me. I will do my first mailbag video. Because after Chinese New Year, I got lots of package containing some stuff for future projects. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye!